and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels, the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Meta Maya, a galactic ambassador and new earth architect who's joining us um, from Egypt. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded people. So thank you so, so much. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present to raise your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and take charge of your destiny so you can spread your wings and soar. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, guide meditation, angel oracle cards to assist you in remembering why you are here, your spiritual path, and the clarity on the next steps to take. I also offer multidimensional virtual retreats, several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, a six-week guide meditation series to step into confidence, and various workshops. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Maya Mita, about how skywalkers are rising. Now, Maya is a star seed on a wild adventure journey, traveling the world, activating new levels of her superpowers, working the grid near ancient sites and sowing the seeds of cosmic consciousness wherever she goes. Maya's journey of multidimensional activation, deprogramming and reprogramming has lasted seven years, guided all the while by the synchronistic magic of the Mayan calendar. In the thick of it, on the front lines, she has met magicians, alchemists and galactic beings on the path, desperately searching for a sense of tribe. Now, we often incarnate in places that need our frequency, yet cannot possibly reflect back to us the true sense of our identity. We feel alone and isolated, confused. We hide and suppress our gifts in an effort to fit into a hostile and divisive world. In Dahab, Sinai, Maya has discovered a wonderful place where we can coexist in magical multidimensional community. Now, she uses her gift of psychic energetic attunement to spirit and to the earth to explore the metaphysical nature of reality and chart a new cause for humanity, one that empowers individuals to embody their divinity, find joy and purpose in community and rise as magicians, crafting a new earth reality. Her mission is to revive esoteric wisdom, remember cosmic history and play in the realms of the mythic creativity with all who seek to be awakened to their true power. Maya dances to the rhythm of the earth and sings to the music of the spheres. So without further delay, hello Maya and welcome to Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, Ray. <laughs> Thank you for that amazing introduction. I'm doing good. I'm really excited. I'm really excited and I'm really happy to be speaking with you. Excellent. And coming to you from the sunny Sinai. <laughs> I know. Beautiful, isn't it? Um, so, yeah. it's, and that's why I love technology. Sometimes it can be a pain, but other times it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a boon. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you all that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Maya and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Maya, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how Skywalkers can remember and find their place on Earth? With pleasure. Uh, well, it's been it's been a harrowing adventure journey uh, the last seven years. Um, I left Montreal, Canada in uh, January 2016, very much called uh, to a deeper sense of purpose. And, um, and nothing could really prepare me for what, what would transpire uh, because I started to undergo a series of activations and what I call purges, releasing all of this density from my body uh, and not having any, any guide or any reference, you know, for what I was actually going through. Um, but at the same time, feeling somehow divinely guided and, and protected um, and and I began meeting people on my journey as well, particularly the Mayans in Guatemala and Mexico that sort of started to open this whole uh, whole other realm, you know, of cosmic 
history and multidimensional remembrance. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been really intense. And, um, and for me, you know, I, I sort of, I, I incarnated into a pretty heavy um, uh, situation. I, I suffered a lot of abuse and trauma as a child. And so it kind of somehow gave me this um, power and strength to to hold myself through whatever I was going through and experiencing. Uh, and I can say that my journey has sort of been a sort of gradual stepping up continuously uh, with a few really more intense, poignant uh, activations along the way. Um, but that's really enabled me to like slow digest and understand what's what was happening and basically like this process of ascension, you know, with all of its like flavors and colors and styles along the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so, so as well about, um, I'd say about three years ago, I started to meet a lot of uh, what I would say are maybe younger generation starseeds that uh, that didn't quite have the all of the puzzle pieces, you know, and that I was able to kind of show up and just fill in the blanks for them, you know, with whatever they were experiencing and going through. Um, and then the really the really special thing about my journey, which I feel is a personal uh, mission and what we say uh, we call a terma, which is like a secret treasure that sort of unlocks from within you, uh, is this deep connection with the Mayan culture and uh, who are related to Atlantis as well. Um, basically the the incarnation of the last of the Atlantean epoch. and uh, and I discovered the Mayan calendar and the Mayan astrology system in 2016. Although definitely I had received some kind of activation unbeknownst to me uh, in 2012, because in 2012, I found myself um, very, very randomly uh, in Palenque, December 21st, <laughs> unplanned and, and very spontaneous. Uh, and sure enough, uh, that started to catalyze like the transformation four years before I actually left uh, Canada. So when I did discover the Mayan system, um, first of all, I didn't even know at the time, I couldn't even conceive of at the time that there was another calendar. Yeah. You know, I was fully in the programming of this Gregorian uh, calendar system and our perception of time as linear. And it began as a curiosity. I just was interested to read about the energies. I was very fascinated at how my Mayan astrological sign, and I began with the ancient system. So my sign, when I read about it, I was amazed at how accurate it was, you know, and how it described parts of me that I, I knew were in me, but I didn't know how. Um, and so it began as a curiosity and I started to, started to explore while I was traveling, paying attention to these uh, energies encoded in the, uh, what's called the Tzolkin, the sacred count of days for the ancient Maya. And I quickly realized that I was paying attention to it and using it as a tool to guide my, my subconscious and my, my journey uh, life took on a whole other quality and I started to experience uh, synchronicities almost every day. And I also became aware of sort of just remembering these different energies that, you know, in modern culture and modern society, we don't, we don't think of to sort of keep track with these, these different themes. Because, for example, in the system, you know, there are days where the, the energy energy is more suited to, I don't know, planning and strategizing um, and other days when the energy is more suited to resting or holding ceremony. So it kind of kept me on an interesting, uh, interesting energetic wave. And it took about two years. It took about two years for me to sort of shift to the galactic one. 
um, because there is a, a sort of version 2.0 that was introduced in 1987. Um, and this one, the science of English names, and it's a little bit more tailored to like our understanding as, as contemporary humans on the planet. And in that system, I am a blue cosmic monkey, <laughs> which I adore. <laughs> I think that's pretty and, good. Uh, yeah. And it's very fun. You know, it's very fun. It's very fun. It's simple. It's, it's, uh, but it has a magic as well because it incorporates sacred geometry, numerology. Uh, and in my experience, um, sort of allowing myself to be inspired by the themes and archetypes held within it. Uh, I've just been able to rapidly like unlock a lot of limiting beliefs, uh, you know, really see myself as a magical creator, see other people as well through the energies that they hold, you know, how, how we each have a unique and special magic. Um, and oftentimes we're, we're not aware that, that our greatest power and our greatest gifts is, is just in how we naturally are, you know, how we sort of naturally operate. So yeah, it's been really interesting. And I spent three years in Central America before coming over to Europe. Um, there's been a lot of deep inner process as well as outer adventure. And all along the way, you know, meeting really magical beings, um, many of them, you know, doing, doing readings for them with the Mayan astrology and finding that they really love it, they really resonate with it, and uh, seeing how we all kind of connect. Mm -hmm. and, and most definitely, you know, I've realized that part of my, my particular um, mission, I feel very much like a star mama sometimes, like meeting the, the star seeds that are kind of feeling alone, isolated, um, confused, really shy and nervous about their abilities, uh, reluctantly admitting, you know, that they can, they maybe have some clairaudience or clairsentience or, or what have you. And just, uh, just helping them feel home and helping them realize, no, you're not strange. You're not weird. You know, you're actually like a cut, a cut above and we're leading the charge. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, I, th and, I, th and uh, um, I think that's been such a, a big thing, especially, um, you know, a lot of older people as well now are kind of like looking back and thinking, oh, that's why I've had all these issues during my life, why I've never felt like I fitted in, why I was classes different, because this is this is what I am. And by them remembering now, again, it's helping all those younger people because there's more and more coming through, much many yeah. more coming through. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, if, if you're the older person, you know, you now can start helping those young those younger people. That's why you came here in the first place. Mm -hmm. for, 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 the, for the new generation to come through to help and guide them because they're going to be the ones who are going to be creating um, this beautiful heaven on earth, this community-based um, way of living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's been really nice too. I've met some, I've met uh, as well, like quite a few uh, first waivers. Um, they have such an interesting frequency because they aren't necessarily interested in a lot of the the metaphysical knowledge or cosmic history and it's but it's just they they hold a frequency of just like freedom you know many of them busting through really really dense realities and um and yeah and it's really fun and then here i find myself in this magical wonderland uh this very special place on earth definitely the only place like it in i think all of the middle east uh which is dahab south sinai and uh i arrived here thinking i was going to spend a month visiting a friend another another galactic gal um, but very quickly i got the psychic impression that i would be on mission here for about two to three years and I started to understand why, because there's uh, there's quite a lot of density here, but there's also like a lot of potential. When I first came in, I saw many different cultures meeting, 
and we have the Egyptians, we have the local Bedouin who are like the indigenous here, the original tribal, nomadic tribal people of Sinai. We have a sizable Russian and Ukrainian population. We have Europeans from all over and everybody is just kind of like mixing and uh, mixing in the pots, you know, of alchemy and the cauldron, so to speak. So you can actually witness, for example, you can witness a woman in a bikini walking to the beach right beside uh, a woman in a, in a full hijab, in a full head covering. Uh, so there's that kind of potent, uh, potent space where a lot can transform and transmute and evolve very quickly. And only in two years since I've been here, I've seen a massive influx of star seeds and very magical beings. We seem to all be like becoming attracted to this place. Uh, and everyone kind of says, like, I think the number one comment or remark about Dahab is that you can be as you are and, and, and no one will uh, judge you for that. You're welcomed, you know, for your uniqueness. Uh, of course, there's still, there's drama, you know, here and there, but <laughs> of course. in general, there's also like the war of the gods going on and like the drama of the shamans, you know, <laughs> we're all kind of like, you know, we're, we're reactivating our, our powers, but we're also, you know, revisiting ancient timelines and some of us have some karma to clear together and that sort of thing. But in general, it's it's just absolutely spectacular. And we're supported by the sea and the sun and the sand uh, and the winds that come and circulate the energy really quickly and the gorgeous mountains that just have this powerful grounding. So yeah, it's a really magical place. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and um, I mean, your energy just really sort of like comes through. Um, you know even through the com computer screen you know um of of you know how how connected it you are and you know when you were talking about being there you could really feel the energy of the have sort of like coming through which is which is really amazing you know and if you know we could create more places like that on earth yeah everyone would be so much happier mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and i feel that that's sort of the for, for myself, I, I've met many traveling star seeds, um, but what I'm trying to actually, like what the dream is with the galactic arc, you know, that I've created is actually to assemble a kind of a crew um, who are as, as committed as I am to continuing the journey, uh, but we can move together and we can visit different places where we can identify a potential such as Dahab and you know we're we're so much more powerful when we work together you know when we co-create so um, going to these places that we can identify have high potential and then just landing you know getting the download the mission instructions and popping up you know perhaps a space a teaching space a workshop space activity space uh, sharing our gifts helping people, you know, and doing it in a really fun way. For me, I've long felt uh, that sort of the next, the next step in, 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 the, in creating the myth, so to speak, and writing a new myth for humanity is we all know, you know, that we have certain powers alone, but if the world could start to see groups of us doing things together, that would be incredibly powerful. You know, because we have this uh, social animal programming in us, we, we sort of look for social proof and we look for belonging in, in tribe or community. So imagine like a crew of, of you know, a dozen star seeds landing in a spot and just like starting to work their magic. And everyone is going to see that and, and be like, oh, OK, there is something happening, you know, yeah. um, and that can can our our gifts a little bit with a little bit more ease into the density let's say of the 3d because we have each other as support as well this is like the number one thing you know that i've i've sort of been working for and 
Um, like when I say I'm a catalyst for community as well, like I tend to sort of draw people around me wherever I go. And I see how much we struggle when we lack appropriate mirrors for myself as well. It's like if I, if I go down into the soup and I'm somewhere very dense, you know, it doesn't take long before I start to forget myself just a little bit. But if I'm surrounded with other wizards and magicians, uh, you know, then it's then it's quite easy for me to stay in my my home frequency and continue to level up. So yeah, that's I think that's something really important as well. And I would love to over the next years, I would love to sort of be instrumental in starting maybe star seed communities around um, or visiting permaculture villages and intentional communities and uh, and helping them out. Yeah. So permaculture, do you have a background in that? Yeah. Yeah, I got my, uh, I, this is actually how I started the journey. I, I sort of, like I said, I was sort of feeling a, a stirring in me, a deeper stirring that I wasn't satisfied with how, with how I was, basically, I, I wanted to have a greater impact. Um, my background before that was in design as well, but I was working as a graphic designer, uh, web designer. And right around 2016, January, I said, okay, enough of this. I'm going to sign up for a permaculture design course. So I got my permaculture design certification in uh, January 2016 in Mexico. Although it was a, it's a Canadian school, so shout out to Graham Calder and P3 Permaculture, <laughs> yeah, for yeah for helping me start the journey, and and it was amazing. It was like the best six weeks uh, up to that point. I had the best thing I had ever done. It kind of gave me this. I also grew up on land. I grew up in in rural Quebec, Canada, on like 60 acres of woodlands. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I was very blessed. The, the land very much supported me in my youth because, like I said, I had to clear some really, really dark, uh, heavy karmic uh, <laughs> stuff. But, uh, yeah, so as a child, I was running in the fields and playing in the forest and all this stuff. And I had sort of let it, let it slip away from me yeah. while I became like a – you know, a working professional in the city for 13 years. And then when I did the permaculture course, like all of this deeply embodied experiential knowledge just came flooding back into my consciousness. Uh, and then now I got, I received the cognitive intellectual understanding of things that I had felt and observed and, um, and uh, experienced. So it was phenomenal and immediately it, it retrained my, my mind to think and create in ways that were that are symbiotic and harmonic with, with Earth herself. Um, so I also teach this now because it's like, for me, it's fundamental. It's like one of the ways that we have been um, also like just dumbed down, you know, we don't, we don't understand that it's, it's actually quite simple and easy when we observe nature and the patterns that we see in nature and how systems are working in nature. Um, we receive all these codes of how to then create things that are harmonious and regenerative and all the rest, you know? So I have a lot of fun with that as well. So of course here in Dahab, I'm Every Tuesday, I'm teaching permaculture in a local garden. A friend of mine that has a beautiful garden, and uh, and doing free talks and lectures as well, you know, to just spread the word. Yeah, and and I think that you know, and that's going to be more and more important, you know, when you look at rising cost of food and things like that. That really we need to start getting back to the basics and doing a lot of the stuff our, ourselves. It's, it's, it's like taking back our control rather than relying on governments and other people to do this, do it for us. It's time now for us to step up and go, actually, I can sustain myself, you know, I can, you know, I can connect with the right people who will help me to, 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 to live as one, you know, to create that community, to eat healthier. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, we, and we, we're starting to see it a little bit. Like here, here in town, we've had um, we've had like a bit of a shortage in a few things already, you know. And the war in Ukraine is being blamed, you know, because they're they're suffering with their their grain production is is, is slowing down or or stopping. So then there's not enough. Com but you know, the crazy thing though is that with Egypt, Egypt is. A country that has such a phenomenal capacity to be sovereign like it's only in the last couple of decades that Egypt has sort of lost its um, its pride I'd say in being this country that is self-sufficient like it used to be that the Delta region where the Nile is was producing you know most of the world's food at some point yeah <laughs> you know and and the egyptian cotton was was famous right like mm. the egyptian cotton and now now the egyptian cotton is being exported to china i believe uh or even like the seeds for it and there's more and more import you know the country is lying uh, relying more and more on import so this is you know this is something i see that potentially you know a permaculture could really help egypt get back on its uh, feet and be and sort of reemerge as a very powerful yeah. country yeah yeah we, which you know i mean i've i've been to, i've been to egypt twice you know and i and you know and it's just the people over there are just so amazing um uh and and you, and you do and you and you do feel welcome you know even with everything that's been going on you know you know and i went there before um you know the the rise of various factions and stuff like that and i went there after and both times i felt absolutely safe protected by the egyptian people by the land um it it, it is it is an absolutely ama amazing place and i don't know why more people don't go and visit because it is amazing. Yeah, yalla, yalla bina. <laughs> yalla bina in Arabic means come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I felt the same. Like I, I, I had no expectations, you know, before getting here. But the people are so welcoming and so kind. And even even though it is technically like a militarized uh, state. Uh, it's it feels quite safe you know the the police are actually real people the police are people that are here to protect and serve um so so i feel quite safe you know even with all the checkpoints and the stuff that because yeah it's like whereas in in the united states or or canada or the uk when you're dealing with law enforcement you're dealing with a system that is absolutely like ruthless you know and, and it dehumanizes people even um but here you can still interact like one-to-one -one, human to human which is nice yeah yeah but that's not all police officers some police officers are really really nice uh, yes. but it's but, but it is but it is the sis but it is the the system not the individual um officers it's always it's always it's always it's always, it's always the system i think sometimes we're too um, eager in this around blame culture to blame every single person in that in that system where it's mm. not um, uh, every, every every single person in yeah, there. For sure. yeah yeah so so how how long do you plan on staying um, there or are you just waiting to see what unfolds what synchronicities come up as to where you go next um, well, it's been two years and three months, I think, since I, I've been in Egypt. So like I said in the beginning, I got this, I, wherever I land, I always get like a psychic impression, you know, of how long the, the, the mission is going to be. So I feel like it's coming to a gentle close. I'm feeling more and more uh, signs and synchronicities pointing to going deeper into Africa. I have... Um, I have definitely a, uh, a strong pull to South Africa and I have a lot of PowerPoints in my uh, astro cartography chart, like all of these lines converging there. So I think it's going to be really potent and uh, yeah, and I'm nearly ready, you know, I'm nearly ready. So South Africa and perhaps uh, Kenya and Tanzania as well. Kenya seems to have quite a powerful uh, creative energy 
uh, in through it as well. Like I've to been told that there are two smart cities that are being built or designed um, where there's a lot of sustainable uh, ecological design happening. And in general, that there's a lot of uh, people in Africa that are just ready for change, like absolutely ready for change. Uh, because they didn't follow the same cycles of development that the Western world did, yeah. so there's, yeah, there's a really good opportunity there to create some some powerful uh, new things. And I'm not sure if I'm going to return to Sinai in terms of making it a base or not. Uh, I think I'll see what what unfolds in Africa. Yeah, yeah. So, so what chart did you just say that you did? Well, points the cartography. Yeah, astro cartography. So this is that? <laughs> this is uh, this is just the Western astrology, oh, okay. like the zodiac astrology. But you get a, um, I suppose in a in a way it can actually be separated out from it though because it's not dependent on the signs. It's more, uh, it shows you a map of the world, uh, and of course take with a grain of salt because the the, the map of the world that most we use today is not quite accurate right but yeah. map of the world with with all of the planetary transits based on your moment of birth uh for example how jupiter was transiting across the globe so you get like a line for jupiter and then this shows you different places on the planets where you have specific energies activated by default uh which can be very useful in planning if you want to um, for example, anything that you might want to explore within yourself or activations you might want to receive or what have you, you can kind of see what planetary influences are where. Um, so it's quite useful actually. Uh, before I got into, before I got into it, I was in Ireland and I was right on the Western coast of Ireland and I was going through a hell of a time hell of an activation um a lot of the star wars stuff was coming in because <laughs> yes. this is also there's a there's an island off the coast called skellig where part of uh star wars one of the star wars movies the newer ones were filmed anyways so i was there and i was going through massive transformation and really get receiving these crazy downloads um you know, that's where like some of the Skywalker stuff came in even more strongly. Because uh, by the way, the red Skywalker is one of the archetypes from the Galactic Mayan dream spell. Uh, and anyone that possesses a cosmic tone as well, like myself, we can become Skywalkers as well. Like the 13th tone is like the, the sort of training for the Skywalker thing. So anyway, so I'm there and I'm going through deep, deep, deep transformation. And then at some point later, I find out that I've got a Pluto line passing right where I was, like within, within a couple kilometers of this island. And Pluto is the planet of complete and, and thorough transformation, you know, like you just don't go back from that. Um, so deep, deep, deep alchemy. And sure enough, those themes were very present for me at this place. Uh, whereas, by contrast, when I was in Mexico uh, and Guatemala, I had a Jupiter line and a Venus and a Moon line. So there was a lot of lovely emotion, um, meeting beautiful people, soul connections, and a lot of expansion, but in a bit of an easier way than than the uh the pluto line in ireland <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah this sense of, I'm, I'm thinking maybe i ought to get my own done and just see you know the places where i've been or why i why I ended up going to those uh places where i've where i've, where I've done my uh where I've, where I've done my traveling um and obviously yeah. egypt was obviously one of those places since i've been there twice um, yeah. and and that and i do know i've had past lives um in yeah. in egypt so the Mayan um, astrology in that, how much different is it to the Western astrology? Um, because because obviously, you know, say like I'm a Virgo, you know, would how they describe a Virgo in Western astrology be the same as it would be in Mayan? 
astrology. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, um, I'd say it's quite different. Uh, it's quite different. It's not on the um, the uh, the zodiac wheel at all. You know, the zodiac wheel of the constellations. It's not really based on the constellations. Uh, according to the Mayans themselves, it's based on a galactic transmission uh, where, you know, there's a lot to it that's that's still quite uh, a mystery. Like it's sort of will take a long time to unfold, you know, exactly how they receive this knowledge. Um, but they they basically uh, at the, the foundational level, they had what was called the sacred count of days which was a sequence of 260 days that they used for their, um, their, their daily life and their ceremonial life, their spiritual life. This was something that connected them to the energies of the cosmos. And this 260 was, com was comprised of uh, two wheels. You imagine like one wheel with the numbers 1 to 13 on them. Mm -hmm. And why 13? The, to the Maya, the number 13 was important and sacred in that the number 13 repeats uh, in nature quite a lot. Um, mainly, we have 13 lunar cycles every solar year. Uh, therefore, the women also had 13 fertility cycles every year. Uh, we have 13 major articulations in our bodies, like our joints, um, in, with the 13th being the, the neck, so on and so forth. And these 13 numbers, this is where the, the sacred geometry and the numerology kind of comes in. These numbers were called tones, and they were thought to be the 13 tones of creation, these 13 core frequencies that are being emitted from the galactic center uh, that, that create the reality, that actually create the hologram. And then these numbers would cycle with 20 day signs. So the second wheel, you know, if you've got one wheel with numbers, one wheel with 20 signs, these 20 day signs were these archetypal, uh, energies slash like personality constructs uh, in the ancient Mayan system, which is much more of a masculine sort of energy. Uh, the signs are very shamanic um, and they're all related to the, the symbolism that was present for the Maya in their environment of the jungles, you know, of Mesoamerica. So there's the jaguar, um, the eagle, uh, the storm, you know different things like this and then and then in the modern you know it kind of switches up a bit for uh, red dragons and blue monkeys <laughs> and that sort of thing but yeah so these these the, the the sacred count of days the 260 obviously this is not uh, a calendar year this is not 365 uh, so they had a different system it was like basically this imagine like a russian uh russian nesting doll yeah you know like this with the with the 260 sulkin like as the smallest one and then it would kind of grow out into many different levels so the 260 would fit into the 365 yeah in a way that it would produce cycles of 52 years this basically means that for example if today and all we've done is sort of equate the Mayan dates with the Gregorian just for our, our purposes. But the Mayan calendar system is something like completely different than the Gregorian. Yeah. Um, so, for example, let's say that today is uh, February 3rd. Is that it? Uh, <laughs> it's the third is nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah, February 3rd. Yeah, which February goes 3rd. To, right, right. <laughs> it goes to show you how much I care about this now. <laughs> but yeah, so let's say February 3rd. And today in the Galactic Mayan is a red magnetic dragon. So for that to happen again, where 
of February 3rd will be a red magnetic dragon. This will only happen in 52 years from now. So they were also able to calculate like much bigger chunks of time and like cycles of energy lasting much larger uh, chunks of time. And, and according to the prophecy, this is how they were also able to foretell that um, the Spanish would arrive. They didn't necessarily know it was the Spanish, but that yeah. certain foreign, foreign entities would invade and destroy um, their civilization. So they actually planned for this and used their calculations uh, to develop their consciousness sufficiently to be able to uh, to ascend, you know, into a higher dimension. And this is kind of where some of the stuff comes from, where how we see that the Mayan civilization appears to have been at its peak, really, really, really powerful and well developed, and then just they vanish without yeah. a trace. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it's it's, ama it's amazing, um, you, you know, when you when you look back, and it's interesting about fifty two years, hmm. mm. uh, and, and that, that that that's that's very fascinating. So another quick question is, obviously, um, going across the screen, people say are uh, seeing uh, Meta Maya, but obviously I'm calling you Maya. How yeah. did that come about? <laughs> uh that's just a little thing, you know. It's um. I don't quite understand it fully myself either, but I was, uh, I was in Ireland um, and I was clearing some really, really heavy, heavy stuff. Um, and at some point I was in a, I mean, you know, people familiar with this process will, will, will get me. It's like, I was just deep in this like purge, you know, where I had all of these programs servicing of like, you know, self-worth and, and you know feeling rather hopeless and uh and miserable uh and a chant began to uh, I, I began to hear a chant and this chant was meta maya and it sort of was it came and it just lifted me out of my my uh, state and back into my higher consciousness um and when I had sufficiently risen in my consciousness again, then I felt some of my guides come in. And one of them is Thor. <laughs> of course. One of them is Thor. Shout out to the Vikings. <laughs> um, one of them is, is Mother Mary as well. Um, and, uh, and, there's a Hindu presence that's always with me that I'm not sure if it's one guide, but there's, it's also connected with the, with the Arcturians, right? So I had Arcturian energy, Hindu energy, uh, Mother Mary, Thor. And then I also have a very strong connection somehow to, um, to Anne Frank and the Jewish, uh, there's something Jewish in me that I don't, I don't really fully understand yet, but it's there. So I kind of like just heard this chant and this name, and then of course the Maya, of course, you know. Oh, cool. So then I heard this name, and I asked, "What is this? You know, what is this? What, where is this coming from?" And the answer that just came back was, "You can use this. Use this as your name." So I was still a bit trepidatious about it, but once I arrived to Egypt, and I saw people's difficulty with. Um, pronouncing my birth name which is Melanie <laughs> so some people seeing this might might recognize me as Melanie or Mel but I basically you know I was getting Melanie Melanie and it was just annoying the hell out yeah. of me and I said okay okay it's time for Maya to emerge so it very much feels like you know uh, an aspect of my higher identity and the way that it's spelled as well with the with the H's, this this feels like it's there's some Hebrew element yeah. in there. So it's kind of like a fusion, you know, of more of I guess what my soul, my soul's essence carries. Um and yeah, 
So Meta Maya, and I just go by Maya for short. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I just love that story. I think it's so it's so it's so brilliant. Um, so as you know, um, I do angel oracle card readings and guided meditations, and each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves and those watching. So Maya, would you like me to do an angel oracle card or a mini guided meditation? Yeah, sure. What, what which one would you like? Uh, so there's angel, so angel, do oracle? An angel to, so I can do an oracle card or do a mini guided meditation. Um, I'm, I don't know. I'm open to both. What's the guided meditation like? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. If I do a card and then mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll do a mini guided meditation based on whatever card comes out. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So what does Maya and everyone who's watching this? need to know for their high good at this moment in time what does Maya and everyone who's watching this the high school at this moment in time what does Maya want to watch this okay so let's see what cards are gonna come out okay so close your eyes <laughs> And anyone who's uh, watching this, only do this if you're, well, if you're watching this, you shouldn't be driving. If you're listening to this, make sure you're not driving. So close your eyes. And as you do so, take a deep breath in. And on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be in this space. Take another deep breath in. And on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be here. And allow your breathing to fall into its natural rhythm. Every in-breath relaxing you more and more. And every out-breath just releasing everything that doesn't need to be here. And just think about relaxing your whole body. Think about relaxing your whole body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. All the way down your arms to your fingertips when you think about relaxing so you will relax give yourself permission and allow yourself to relax and now take your awareness to the top of your head and as you do just feel your whole head start to relax as that relaxation moves down your face the back of your head all the way down into your neck, down into your shoulders, and your shoulders feeling so relaxed as if they're being bathed in beautiful warm sunshine. As that relaxation moves down your arms, all the way to your fingertips, and just allow this relaxation to move into your upper body, relaxing your chest muscles, your stomach muscles, all the muscles in your back. Relaxation moving down into your hips, your pelvis, your buttocks sinking you deeper down where you are sitting or laying. As this relaxation moves down, into your legs, moving all the way down to your feet, to your toes. And your whole body is just so relaxed. And I want you now to engage your imagination and imagine that you are standing at the edge of a forest. And there are beautiful trees in the forest behind you. And stretching out in front of you is a path, but it's a path leading to a wall. It's like an impasse, somewhere where you can't get past. So you may walk along that path towards this wall looking to see if there's a way through, above or around. But there doesn't at this moment seem to be that space to carry on to that path. So you walk back towards the forest area 
and there you notice a squirrel a squirrel that has got several nuts around it and it just seems to be sitting there just reflecting being present in the moment so you settle down with your back against one of the trees and you think about your life and you think about if there's an impasse something that seems to be blocking you at the moment so just take this moment to like the squirrel just to reflect and maybe look at how you can redirect your energy redirect your energy to move past this impasse beyond this block and i'll leave you just for a moment or two and just allow whatever information to come to you in whatever form whether a thought a knowing a picture words colors sounds or scents just gain the wisdom and information you need while sitting with your back against this tree and this beautiful squirrel in front of you way can you redirect your energy what new paths do you need to take This is only a brief visit, so just allow the final bits of information to come to you. And as they do, you relook at the forest. And it could be now that that path leads through the wall. Maybe there's now a gap in the wall or you notice other paths now going off in different directions or maybe a path going back through the forest that's the new path the path that you'll be taking so just get a sense of that path and where it's going to lead you And you'll be able to remember this path when I count you back. And you thank the squirrel in the tree for being there and helping you. And in a moment, I'm going to count from one to five, each ascending number bringing you back to the current, to the here and now, remembering everything, your new direction, your new pathway. So coming back now, one, coming further back to remembering your whole journey all the way back three four five all the way back fully present in the here and now fully back wiggle fingers and toes move your body open your eyes and if you have a drink by you do have a drink and welcome back So how did you find that? Yeah, very nice. I almost uh, sneezed at some point when I got a I got a message, you know, I got kind of a confirmation of something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Well, as you can guess, the card that came through was impasse, reflect and redirect your energy. Okay, interesting. So let's move that. 
So there you go, and you can see the wall um, uh, in the in the background. So I think a very apt card. Um, and again, you know, for everyone watching, you know, it is if you feel that you're in an impasse at the moment, just take the time to reflect and redirect your energy and you'll be amazed at the new pathways and ideas that will um, actually uh, come to you. Um, so, Maya, do you have any thoughts or insights to leave our viewers? But of course. <laughs> um, the takeaway from the Mayan wisdom teachings and the calendar and the astrology system is that time is art. Time is art. In the eyes of the creator, in the eyes of a creator, time is art. So, you know, one of the things that I, I've encountered the most on my journey when, when visiting permaculture projects or communities you know, we have to get rid of the uh, the eco anxiety. No, we don't need to save the planet. No, we we're not running out of time. You know, we're not running out of time. We just have to realign ourselves to natural time and respect the cycles and seasons of existence, both inner within ourselves and outer. And, uh, and we'll automatically be creating in, in, in tandem with the earth. So, um, so yeah, time is art. Relax, you know, relax into yourself. Relax into who you feel you, you truly are and what gifts you have. If it's easy, it's right. Because <laughs> <laughs> suffering is a program. So if it's easy, it's right. If it flows, it's right. Um, and we each have our, our, our own personal magic, you know, we each have things that we are uniquely designed, you know, to, to bring in. So trusting that within, within ourselves and bringing out, you know, who we, who we truly are is all we're really here to do. Uh, and the more of us that can do this, you know, together, then we are, we are co-creating the new reality. We are co-creating new earth and bringing paradise back. So... Yeah, so relax and have fun and play, play with it. And this is the Blue Monkey way, by the way. <laughs> the, blue, <laughs> the Blue Cosmic Monkey is here to remind us how to relax and play, see through the duality, um, and, and recognize that it's all a matter of perception. And if we're not enjoying what we're doing, what are we really doing? So. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Brilliant words of wisdom. So thank you so, so much. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this and found this conversation found insightful because I know I definitely have and I've definitely learned a lot. So Maya, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Uh, the easiest way is through my site for the Galactic Arc. So the Galactic Arc is a creative, a poetic, um, a mystical presentation for the platform it's for star seeds and awakened creators um you can just go to galacticarc.org and uh and find more information there get your mayan reading if you're interested um and uh and contact me through there or always on instagram metamaya on instagram and uh and facebook as well yeah, beautiful. And what I do is I'll put those links in the comments um, after the show so that people can just click on them and go um, straight to you. Um, yeah, do 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 check out um, her site, you know, and have a look at your mind calendar. You might be surprised. <laughs> So everyone, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. And if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step um, onto your more spiritual, more dimensional path, but feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to connect with me um, so that we can see how you can, I can help you move your life forward to take charge of your destiny so you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording. I take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life as well as a couple of other free gifts and again thank you so much for watching and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and hear the your own wisdom um, uh, that, that's been given today by Maya
And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified when the show goes live. I post new guided meditations because each description, each comment, each like really does help me. And I look forward to seeing you all same time, same place next week. Thank you, Maya. Um, brilliant that the internet so has, has, has kept us going, which is absolutely brilliant. Yes. Um, <laughs> And thank you, Dab, for a, a beautiful background. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.